Greens powders. Athletic greens. Athletic greens. I tried athletic greens. They're constantly promoted by some of the most popular fitness influencers in the world. And the advertised benefits are huge, especially for athletes. Just one tasty scoop of AG1 designed to help you meet all of your foundational nutritional needs. But is it all marketing hype? And what does the current research say about greens powders actually making you a faster endurance athlete? Well, here at Trainer Row, we dug into the science so you don't have to, and let's get started. First thing to note is that every greens powder is unique, and most use something called a proprietary blend as the main portion of the ingredients. After hearing that, you might be asking, what's a proprietary blend? It is odorless, tasteless, dissolves instantly in liquid, and is among the more deadly poisons known to man. In short, it's a combination of ingredients used exclusively by a single company in which they're required to list each ingredient, but they are not required to list the amount of each ingredient. Now, a virtuous perspective believes that these are used by companies to keep their ingredients hidden from competitors to maintain maintain a competitive advantage. While a cynical perspective believes that these are used by companies to claim that their products have a ton of valuable ingredients for marketing purposes, while actually only putting in trace amounts of them. But wherever you stand on that, let's take a look at the ingredients of one of the most popular greens powders, Athletic Greens. Good endurance performance begins with good health. So if you're taking this for general health reasons and it's worth the cost to you, keep on keeping on. But if you're questioning whether a greens powder is the missing piece that you need to become a faster endurance athlete, listen up because we're about to go deep. Now to make this video, I combed through publications and journals to find the latest research on all 48, yes, 48 ingredients, and that took a massive amount of work. So if you appreciate that, it would mean a lot if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So why did I do all of this? Well, probably like you, I felt like, man, maybe I should be taking this stuff so my health can be better and I can be faster on the bike. And when you look on the label, basically every ingredient in these proprietary blends is quote, good for you. But the devil's in the details. And if you're just relying on something because it merely sounds healthy or on bro science opinions of other people, you you may be spending a ton of money on something that is giving you little to no benefit. So without further ado, let's break down what science says on if athletic greens will make you faster. First is an alkaline nutrient dense superfood complex amounting to 7.4 grams per serving. Why do I mention the amount per serving? Because this proprietary blend has 25 ingredients. And even though this is highly unlikely, let's just assume that there's an equal proportion of each ingredient in this blend. If so, then that would give us about 0.29 grams of each ingredient, which is a very small amount, especially when you start looking at the sort of dosages you would need to see an improvement in performance. But remember, we don't know the amount of any of these ingredients. So with all that out of the way, after looking at the current research that investigated endurance performance improvement for all 25 ingredients in this proprietary blend, I was surprised. I only found studies investigating performance improvement for seven of these ingredients. And while a lack of evidence is not the same thing as evidence of no effect, part of me believes that if researchers had sufficient reason to be investigating these ingredients, they would. So let's start out with the first ingredient, which is purported to have antioxidant properties, organic spirulina. In a 2022 paper by Gurney and Spendiff, where they reviewed current and past research on spirulina's effect on performance, they summarized that when viewing the entire body of research, results were mixed. And in the studies that did show performance improvement, it looks like dosages of eight to 10 grams were used, which is more than this entire proprietary blend of 25 ingredients. So it's doubtful this ingredient is gonna make you faster on the bike. Next is inulin, which is a form of prebiotic. And the goal of prebiotics is to improve gut health and a healthier gut causes a cascade of positive health benefits throughout the body. But even just defining what a healthy gut is, much less engineering your way from an unhealthy gut to a healthy one is extremely complicated. Hughes and colleagues pointed this out in their 2021 study summarizing that due to the dynamic nature of the gut, it's difficult to understand what is influencing change in the study environment. Ultimately, they stated, quote, more studies are needed. Based on this review, it looks like five to 15 grams was the typical dosage, which of course, again, you're not gonna get enough of that from this proprietary blend. After that, you have to go way down the list to beetroot powder to find an ingredient that is backed by research as being performance enhancing. Now, the performance benefit of beetroot powder is well established in the research, but typically five to 10 grams is the recommended dose. So again, 
probably not gonna get enough of it to see a difference here. Next is cocoa bean polyphenol extract. And while I personally really want this one to be true because I have an insatiable sweet tooth for dark chocolate, the research doesn't look promising. Now this one was a bit tougher, but in 2019, Masaru and colleagues found that with dosages of one gram per day, they did see some mechanistic changes in the body, but there was no actual change in inflammation, recovery, and exercise performance. So this could be another example of mechanisms not equaling outcomes. But I, for one, think that we should do much more research in this area, and I totally volunteer myself to test the effects of dark chocolate on cycling performance. All right, let's rip through the last few of these. Grapeseed extract is claimed to be an antioxidant, but even at doses of eight grams per day, Ella Halde and colleagues did not see performance improvement. Green tea extract is stated to improve metabolic rate and fat oxidation, but for many different reasons, possibly hinting toward the interaction with caffeine, the results are mixed when you look at the body of research and in human randomized controlled trials, you don't see performance improvement, according to Green and colleagues in 2010. And finally, ginger rhizome powder. It's touted as a natural anti-inflammatory, but even at doses of two grams per day, Wilson and colleagues did not see any sort of improvement in performance. So that takes care of the first proprietary blend. And before I go on, the reason that I'm citing specific studies like this is because they represent the body of the current research, but there's a chance that I've missed studies here. So if you can find a study that contradicts these, please put it down below. It'd be great to find out. Unfortunately, this same theme continues for the next proprietary blend called Nutrient Dense Extracts, Herbs, and Antioxidant. This one has 17 ingredients adding up to 2.7 grams. So if these were evenly split, it would add up to 0.16 grams per ingredient. Again, that's not likely, but good for adding perspective. Keeping it short, I could only find research that showed performance improvement potential for three of these ingredients. And even though the term adaptogens is so hot right now, the research was not promising for improving endurance performance. First is alkaline pea protein isolate. And Lorero and colleagues show that pea protein can be equally effective to whey protein in helping with muscle repair and growth. But you only get about 1.8% of the dosages that they typically test in studies. So just by dose alone, this is not gonna make you faster. Then there's rhodiola rosea. This one is getting a lot of attention lately for being an antioxidant and an analgesic. But in 2022, Lou and colleagues found that while it did reduce markers of oxidative stress, they did not observe consistent outcomes in terms of endurance performance. But more importantly, tested daily dosages were around 1.7 grams per day, which is more than 60% of this proprietary blend that's made up of 17 different ingredients. Finally, ashwagandha root extract. This is claimed to serve as an antioxidant and potentially boost testosterone production. And in 2021, Bonilla and colleagues performed a systematic review and meta-analysis that did show promising results in terms of VO2 max, muscle fatigue, tiredness, and recovery. But in their words, more comparable studies are needed in exercise training and athletic populations are needed to derive a more stable estimate of the true underlying effect. And again, the catch here is that it's recommended to take more than 0.9 grams per day, which would be about 30% of the 17 ingredient blend. So even though it seems unlikely that one ingredient would occupy one third of this blend, this might actually be a spot where you could see some performance improvements. Now this brings us to the final two proprietary blends and these ones are gonna be really quick. First, a five ingredient 0.15 gram digestive enzyme and super mushroom complex for which I could find no published research showing performance improvement for any of these ingredients. That was easy. And finally, a 0.038 gram daily free probiotics blend that has 7.2 billion CFU. Now that's a good dosage for probiotics, but in terms of finding studies that could back up the usage of such probiotics to endurance performance improvement, I couldn't find anything. Again, if you can find something solid, let me know down in the comments below. Aside from all of these proprietary blends and athletic greens, it does contain a small amount of fiber, carbohydrate, potassium, sodium, vitamins, and other ingredients that could be helpful for general health. But again, considering the portion sizes, none of these are likely to be performance enhancing. So what does this mean for you? Well, that depends. If you don't have a balanced diet and never eat fruits and vegetables, then it seems unlikely that you'll be worse off by taking athletic greens. But if you do eat a well-balanced diet with a lot of fruits and vegetables, it seems very unlikely that you would see some sort of improvement, maybe even in general health, but definitely in terms of endurance performance. But as an endurance athlete, you just have to consider the cost. Depending on if you do a one-time purchase or a subscription or single-use packets or a bag, you'll be spending anywhere between 80 to $109 
per month after one year. That's nearly as much as seven full years of a Trainer Road subscription for something that has little to no evidence that it will make you faster. Meanwhile, as of today, Trainer Road has nearly 18,000 positive reviews in the App Store, adding up to a 4.9 star rating from athletes around the world that have used it from doing everything from just getting in shape to winning world championships. If you haven't signed up yet, do it right now. There's a 30 day money back guarantee and you'll be joining the thousands of athletes that are using AI to get faster. That's it for this time. See you all soon.